Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. And um, we're going to talk about some interesting things today. We promised everyone that we would not leave any child behind. We've been talking about marriage, and we've been talking specifically about um, how to become one, not only in um, our relationships, but also in finance. And I pray that that's been uh, a, a help and a source of, of uh, direction for, for you. Um, we, we, are, we are really truly been uh, encouraged and surprised that how um, impacting this uh, series has been for uh, a number of people. And so we're, we're, we're glad to, uh, to do that. And as we said before, uh, I don't consider myself to be a, a marriage expert. Uh, I just think that if you've been doing it 31 years, you have a little credibility. <laughs> On the job experience. On the job experience. So uh, I want you to lighten up. If you're a single uh, or if you're married, this, this, this segment is for you as well. Yes. So a lot of times we, we come and say, oh, you know, that's for somebody else. And that's what happens in church a whole lot. We, we, we look down the, down the aisle or down the pew and say, oh, Bishop, I'm so glad you're talking about that cat. They really do need that. But, you know, the, the truth is, is even if we're talking specifically about singles, it's for you're everybody. Right? Because yeah. even though you're married, you're still a single person. That's good. And you still need to work on you. That's good. And so we're going to talk about That's that. Good. So if you've got your Bible, you know it's not church unless we go to the Bible. So Genesis chapter 2, and this is going to be our reference today. We're going to talk about being single matters. Being single matters in the matters of the family. So this is from the beginning. I told Tammy, I said, if you can just master Genesis 1, Genesis 2, Genesis 3, Genesis 4, and Genesis 5, you don't need the rest of the Bible. That's it. You have a worldview, number one, in Genesis 1. You'll know that God created the world. We didn't evolve from little amoebas into monkeys and then into uh, human beings. Uh, you'll understand who's a creator. You'll understand about the marriage, that, the family, that that's the basic unit of all of mankind. The first church was the family. So, uh, man, Genesis is, is just chug full of so much revelation. So, Genesis chapter 2, uh, let's look at, uh, at verse 15. We'll read to verse 24, okay? It says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend it and to keep it. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man be alone. Now that's verse 18. We're going to focus a little bit more on that verse. God says, I will then make a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every bird of the air, brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. Mm -hmm. So Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. So what does God do? Verse 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, now this is bone of my bones, 
flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one. We'll leave to next week to unpack verse 24. Now, today we'll talk about verses 15 all the way to verse 23. The first thing that God says to Adam after he creates all of creation and all the beast, he says, and I think it is a heartfelt emotion that God himself knew what it was like to be alone. Now, understand, they said, well, God has no needs. I get that. But why would God want to create man? There was a need in God that he wanted companionship, fellowship. This is what, this is what being a believer is all about. We are back in fellowship with our, our heavenly father. Jesus made that possible. So there was this need. So God looked at Adam and saw there was a need that someone, someone could help him. Now, when we talk about being single, listen, I've heard so many, so many comments from singles. And uh, this is what I want to just urge you today. Do not rush. Do not rush from being single into marriage prematurely. Because if you do, it will set you on a course that will be a long detour that you really don't want to go down that road. So let us, let's help. So let me just say this up front. I've said this a number of times. If you've been through separation, if you've been through divorce, please understand there is nothing that we're going to say today to bring condemnation. Right. I pray that we bring liberation Amen. into your life because when we finish today, I believe God's going to cut some things off your past Amen. so that you can go forward in your future, whether it's for you to find a, the next one or if it's for you to be the whole individual that God has uh, called you to be. But I've heard this so many times, and let me just give you some of the quotes that I've heard, Tammy. I can't take it anymore. I'm tired <laughs> of being single. I need a mate now. No one's ever said that here, but just listen to me out. I feel like life is passing me by. What's wrong with me? <laughs> I'm growing older. I know what the problem is. I must be ugly. And here's a big one. I'm almost 30. Uh-oh. That's the big That one. seems to be the magic number. 3-0. Now, I can, I can testify to you personally <laughs> about 3-0. I would get married until I was 30 years old. And I look back, I didn't plan it that way, but I can remember the, the challenges and the the, uh, the, the movement in my life where in my 20s, what God, what God was shaping me and doing me. I, I said this over and over, and it's funny, I, I hadn't, you know, you go back and you listen to yourself. Let me just say up front, I don't like going back and listening to myself. I only go back to listen to myself after a Sunday or a podcast or a television program because I want to find out if I said it right and if I could say it better. But I cringe sometimes, and one, last night we were, I was looking at, we were in the bed, we were laughing, and, and I, I, I mentioned to Tammy, I said, was I a jerk when we first got married? And she had the audacity to say, yes, you were. <laughs> and I, th I thought she would say, no, you were like the most loving and kind person, and uh, man, you, you, were, were you, a, were, you were a diamond in the rough. Yeah, but, <laughs> spin it. Make it feel good, make it look good, but okay, she's right. I think we all come in and we're a little jerk when we come in, especially guys, and, um, and we'll, 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 we'll walk with that a little bit more. But I was 30 when we met. I was 28 when I met Tammy. She was, she had just, I, I think, 17. We weren't even, we weren't dating. We weren't, we weren't even interested in each other, and she was coming to church, and, and I thought, oh, she's a pretty girl, but you know, that's, that's not going to happen. And then life went on and movement. And some of you know our, our story. It was uh, unconventional, <laughs> how God just put it all together. 
And, you know, there were those who didn't say it would work. And, you know, my dad, who was my, my pastor, uh, felt like it was going to work. And so, anyway, here we are, 31 years. I think dad got it right. Uh, but anyway, we, uh, but I was 30. And, and I, I can remember when I, when, I, when I did walk down that aisle, there were some things that I had come to in my life that I believed enabled us to be a success. You know, we know this, that guys mature later than the girls, and guys tend to, to, to play around and be a little bit less serious, and girls are more. And I think for me, the maturity level, which enabled us to have a, a faster, because we didn't, you know, back in those days, we didn't have seminars on family matters. <laughs> the only sermons I heard was get ready to go to heaven, uh, get, get filled with the Holy Ghost, and the rapture was coming. <laughs> and other than that, that was just about our spiritual diet. You know, I was getting saved every Sunday in the altar. I was repenting of things, you know, I, I was repenting of things I, I didn't even do, but I just wanted to make sure that I was going to go to heaven. And that was, I don't know if you were raised in a Pentecostal church, but that's kind of how it went down. That's, you know, you know so, uh, you know, there was holiness or holiness or, or the highway. But I mean, you know, so being able, we didn't have any, we didn't have any marital counseling. No. We didn't, we didn't go through Dr. Benson's 101 course on how to, you know, you know how, to, how to have a happy marriage. Yes. We figured it out on the job. And what we did do is that we, we kind of, kind of patterned ourselves uh, after my parents. Right. And I think that that's what, that's what helped us. But let's talk about being single because the, the honest truth is, is that divorce is ugly. Yeah. And, and, and no matter, we're going to talk about divorce, separated, and those who have been through some hard times. Uh, it's difficult. Before I believe you're married, you are a single person. And singleness as I see in the scripture, is the foundation of marriage. Now, you need to hear me out. We're going to talk about this, which means that we must truly understand who you are first as a single, which will determine your success as a married person. So let me just say it a different way. Your, your, your marriage is going to be successful according to how successful you are as a single. Mm -hmm. I knew who I was and was supposed to do and what I was supposed to do when we were married. So many people come into the marriage and they're still trying to figure themselves out. Yes. And they're trying to find that in someone else when they realize that that person is not going to complete me, I have to find complete and wholeness and my singleness in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And true. so many people come into the marriage believing that the, the spouse the man or the woman are going to bring those things to them that they are lacking. And the case that we see here in the scripture in Genesis was that before Eve was brought to Adam, Adam was already mm -hmm. doing what he had been purposed and given a destiny to fulfill. Right. He was already working. He was already, it was God. Listen, he never asked God for a wife. He never asked God for a wife. God said, it is not good that you be alone. I am of the persuasion that if you will get so busy doing the will and the purpose and the work of yes, God, yes. God will one day come knocking on your door that's true. And he will suggest, you need someone that can walk alongside of you and help you to where you go. And I believe that that's where I was. I wasn't at the place where I was thirsty. Uh-oh. 
or desperate or feeling like life was passing me by. I was okay. And, and you asked me this yesterday. You yeah. said, you said well, how, how, what was your, your th feeling about when we were, I said, honestly, if things hadn't transpired as they had, I probably wouldn't even thought about, about looking Tammy's way. That's true. But because things began to like, oh, I just had like this, like this wow moment, like maybe, maybe she's the one. And the truth is, is at that time in my life, I was so involved in ministry. I was so, I had finished my college degree. I had finished everything. I was so involved. I was doing all of the editing in the TV department. I, I, was, I was working with the youth. I was over the youth. I mean, I was, I don't know, I was over everything. They, we, we tell people now, just get one ministry. Back in those days, the, the word was get 10 ministries. But, but uh, you know, but I was so involved. And then Tammy showed up. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to the bar to find her. I, I didn't go out on, you know, nothing against the online. We didn't have online dating back then. I'm not against online dating. It's just be careful online. But, but the, the point I'm making is that she showed up. God, God presented her to me. I didn't go looking for her. Now, I was glad she showed up. In fact, it was the first Sunday morning that you were preaching Talk about it. on a Sunday morning because your dad Talk was the pastor it. and he was out of town. It was your first Sunday morning preaching engagement yes. in, in the church, and I was a first-time visitor. Mm -hmm. And you gave an altar call, and I got saved yep. under your ministry yes. preaching when you were preaching. Yep. It's the first time I ever sure. got saved. And then when I got water baptized, you were the you were the person doing the water I baptism. I was the at the and I, I made sure. So 31 years later, I, I need to know why did you hold me times, under so long? I, I really need to know this. Well, I just felt that there was uh, there was something there that had to be dealt with, and you know <laughs> historically, the church it's three times. You know, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. And I was Father, Holy Spirit, Word of Knowledge, Word of Heaven. You know. Uh, I could hardly hold my breath any longer. <laughs> no, the, the thing was is that, you know, you know, I'm raised Pentecostal, a preacher, uh, a preacher's son. My grandfather was, uh, was, uh, was, if you don't know, was a Pentecostal uh, uh, preacher. He was, he was saved in 1917 and uh, then filled with the Holy Ghost. And he came from Mississippi to New Orleans in 1934 to start a Pentecostal church. And while he was here, he met a, 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 a very, not, not real well-known man. Y'all may have heard of him. His name was Lester Summerall. Oh, yes. My family met Lester Summerall, and, and so they started uh, one of the first churches back in Friscoville in Araby and here in New Orleans, right off the right line. So that's, that's, my, that's my, 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 my family. Tammy's family, they didn't go to church. They were New Orleanians. You know, they went to church on Easter and Christmas. They're good folks, good people, but uh, they like to party. And so, uh, but anyway, we, we met two different worlds, see? So two, two different worlds. But there's no doubt God was preparing Tammy for me. Yes. There's nobody that could have walked the walk with me as great as she has. She's been the greatest help meet that a man could ever, honestly, she really has. And... We, we get along so well, and we, I'm thankful to God. But I think about how important it was. And she said, when I was 18, I didn't have a chance to even be single. <laughs> but but for, for those of us, we need to understand that everyone's journey is different. It is. You can't compare yourself. If I, all of my friends had gotten married earlier, and so that just wasn't the, the, the path for me. Right. But what we need to understand, and I'm going to talk about that, is that God, there's a difference, ladies and gentlemen, from being single and being alone. Mm -hmm. Single is to be separate. This is what the word single means, to be, to be separate and to be unique. Yeah. Alone is simply having no one present. Stop running. And here's my admonition from being unique and whole and focus on being the best you can be right now. Yes. 
Genesis 2, 18 says that the Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone, so I will make a helper comparable to him. Now, we need to understand that Eve showed up, but that wasn't necessarily the wedding. The wedding took place when Adam said, oh, she is now flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. I'm asked so often, Bishop, is there one person in the world for me? And I'm, I'm like, well, my, my first response is, of course there's one person, but I have to follow it up with this. But there's not only just one person. Because if you're looking just for one person in a world of seven billion people, <laughs> You're going to spend most of your life just searching. It's like, well, what if she's in India? How do you even get to India? That's not how it works. God presented, listen now, God presented Eve to Adam, and Adam was the one who made the choice. That's good. Adam in his own free will and his own uniqueness could have said, man, she looks good. I'm glad I have someone here, but she's not my type. Right. We tend to believe in the Christian world. We get really spooky spiritual about dating. Come we on. get so spiritual that That's we good. don't even want to admit that we are actually attracted. I, I've seen people marry, not because the person was attractive to them, but because the person was just a Christian. Right. Now listen, you know what's better than a Christian? An attractive Christian. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right. Now we understand beauty is in the eye of the beholder. God's created every one of us with a certain beauty. Everyone here is beautiful. But there are certain people that think you're a little more beautiful than other folks. There is an attraction there, a natural attraction. Don't get away and get into the spooky world out there in the never-never land of Christian, the dream world. Come down to reality and mm -hmm. understand that there are things that will come your way that you will be attracted to and that you won't, and you're looking. And we'll talk about the things that you need to look for next week. We're right. not going to talk about that this week. But God said it's not good that you be alone. No. And God did not say that Adam needed a wife. He didn't say it's not good that Adam, you need a wife. Right. He didn't say that. He just said it was not good that you be alone. And ladies and gentlemen, I will be honest with you. It's not good that anyone Come on. In this room, be alone. Amen. But you don't have to be married to not be alone. That's it. Amen. You can be involved in a belong group and not be alone. Come on, help me out, Pastor. Come on. That's true. Can I tell you this? Marriage can feel more like you're alone than when you're not married. That's true. There are people who live in the same house yet they're more lonely having been married That's true. than when they were before they were married. And you know why? Because they're looking to the other person to complete them. That's it. That's it. God wants us to be complete in him. It's not 50-50. It's 100-100. It's 100 and 100. Yes. So God does the presenting, ladies and gentlemen, and we do the choosing. So it is important to understand that God presented Eve to Adam, and then Adam made the choice to marry. I can remember when Tammy, we talked about this, when she came to church, uh, I was preaching the first Sunday, and, and uh, uh, I, you, I, I did Wednesday night services. We had those back in the day, and you know, we, it, you, know you guys don't even understand how church used to go. We used to have Sunday night service. That was back in the day. And if you remember Sunday night service, you are a real old timer in the Lord. <laughs> but, but, you know, so we don't have those. So we just, we just, we, we, you know, we have a Sunday morning. So it's, it's all good. 
But I, I, my first Sunday, my dad was called out on, a, on a, a church that was going through trouble. He was called out, and so he said, son, you got to step in. Well, it was a couple of days before, man, I fasted 40, I mean, I fasted for the next two days. I didn't eat anything. I got to church, and uh, I was weak, but I was ready for God. And uh, man, I preached, and I gave an altar call, and uh, it was about, I guess about eight people came down, seven or eight. The church was way smaller. And uh, Tammy was one of them. <laughs> and uh, man, I, I looked over at her and I said, man, she's a pretty girl. It was my first time seeing her ever, really, first time. And uh, she had come with my sister uh, and my younger sister. And it was, it was funny. Uh, I told one of, the, one of the pastors afterwards, I wasn't a pastor. I was just, a, I think it was a, an associate of something, a deacon. And uh, I said, you know what? I think I'm going to do this follow-up. I'm going I'm to I'm take care of this convert, <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll make sure this is uh, handled correctly. Uh, but it, it, she showed up. It didn't mean that I had to do anything. And then time went on through the dating process, and we came to the place where we realized that this was right. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that to me was, was, is a great example of what it means to just wait on the Lord. Yeah. To not get too anxious. Right. And don't be too spooky because God is, is working. I and remember he understands as we, our needs. As we progressed in our relationship and then we were getting to the point that I think you were thinking of asking the question, like, this is the person I want to be with the rest of my life. Yeah. We got along perfectly. We didn't have problems or anything. And then you asked me, you sat down and you said, I'm going to ask you to go away for three days. Like, I can't see you. I can't talk to you. Because I think you understood much better than I understood. I understand it now that marriage is the single it's most the one. decision. It's the, the most important decision you will ever make in your lifetime. Yeah. Who you marry is the single most decision. So don't you think we need to give time to this? Don't you think it's important to hear this? So you said, go away for, I need you to go away for three days. You said, I'm gonna seek God and I'm gonna seek counsel before I make any decision. And so I thought, dear Lord, I had to go away and stay at a friend's house and I just felt like, well, here I am. And uh, he went and asked people, different elders, different pastors in the church. And outside of the church. And outside of the mentors. church. What did they think about him marrying me? And uh, I didn't know everything going on, but he did it all. And uh, he spent time with the Lord. Well, you know the rest of the story because we're sitting here today. But I'm just saying marriage isn't something that you rush into. It's not a romantic whim of a decision. It's not like, oh, we're out and we're in Las Vegas, so this just feels right. Let's just hook it up. It's not like that no. whatsoever. It is a, a wholly important decision that we're making. It's very, very important that you be so sober in your decision making. So I, I just wanted to bring that to the table. Yeah, so, so there are things that as I, I, my statement is, is that we have to work on our singleness. And even as a married man, I still work on my singleness. Yeah. I'm still working on being a better man. I'm still working on all of the things that I am responsible for to be better at it. Mm -hmm. There's always that room for growth. So the, the thesis, the, the premise of this, these statements are this, do not look to someone else. That's it. To be that missing part of who you are. That's the only one that can satisfy and make you complete and unique in who you are is a deep, consecrated, committed relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. You could give God praise on that one. Amen. So, no doubt. Let's talk about some single matters real quickly. Number one, we look in the scripture, we see that God said to Adam in verse 26 of verse chapter one, God said, let's make man in our image. Let me, let, let me, let me, let me just, just exhort you in your singleness, work on your self image. Mm. You need to know 
who you are and stop looking to someone else to attach yourself yes. to them. You have to love yourself. That's good. You have to like who God created yes. you to be. You are uniquely and wonderfully made. We, we read that scripture in prayer on Friday night. You as a person are unique. Yes. And so you have to come into an understanding and a, 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 an acceptance. You, you may not like where you are right now, but in Christ, he can give you this, the stability that I am. Okay, so Adam knew that he had been made in the likeness and the image mm -hmm. of God. So you need to know. Secondly, understand the importance as a single that Adam did, and that was he lived in God's presence. Yes. Adam, in, 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 in Genesis 2, 15, Eden was the spot of God's presence. And Adam continually lived in the presence of the Lord. Yes. I believe as a single, work on your self-image, but also spend time yes. with the Lord in your own alone time. Yes. I can remember when I was a, a single and I had got, you know, got this, this, this urge to, I was going to be in the ministry. And, but before I was in ministry, I was just a believer. I was a preacher's kid. I was a drummer in the church. And, and I, I, I had this experience where I came to the Lord in a unique way. And when, I, when, I, when that happened, I had an insatiable desire to, to want to be with the Lord all the time. That's I wanted right. to pray. I wanted to read my Bible. And I believe that because of giving myself to those disciplines, that is what created the, the person that was able to embrace marriage and for marriage to be successful. Yes. But here's the challenge. When you do get married, prayer time becomes more difficult. You're right. So when you're single, you can spend more time reading your Bible. Yes. Now I have to ask, can I go off? I have to leave the house. <laughs> I have to say, you know what? I'm going to be gone for a couple of hours. I'll be back. But there was a time when I didn't have to worry about any of that. That's right. When you're at that place, that's the time to give yourself to reading the Bible. Yes. To spending time in the presence of yes. the Lord. Because that's where God, come on. That's, that's right. where God is creating the unique individual that you, you are called to be. See, when you know your value and you know your worth, then you can choose better. If you want someone to value you, you first have to value yourself. Yeah. If you want someone to love you, you first have to love you yourself. Desperate. You ain't desperate. So when you don't know who you are, you will more than likely date down rather than date up. See, you'll date down. I don't know about you, but I don't have a for sale, discounted clearance sale no. on myself. Never did. You can't discount yourself. Top you can't shelf. put yourself on the sale rack like you're done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> well, self-image, the presence of the Lord, and, and, and thirdly, work. Yes. Oh, that got, that got, that was real anointed. Genesis 2, ah. 15 says, Eden is a spot of God's presence, and Adam continued to live in the presence of the Lord. Adam knew what he was supposed to do. Come on, that's important. Work on that before you start looking for Mr. or Mrs. Wright. So guys, you want a girl to join you and be your helpmeet to do what? So if you're doing absolutely nothing, you have no destiny, no purpose, no nothing going on, you're just aimlessly in the wilderness wanting a mate, to do what? What? You want someone to join you to be a helpmate to accomplish what the Lord has set out for you to do. Come on, girls. I was 30 years old. We're wanting to help you. And I, 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 I sat down with Tammy after we agreed to, to come into union. And I said, listen, I am going to be a pastor for the rest of my life. Now, this is not the vocation of the weak at heart. 
<laughs> we are going to experience, and I had to, I had to break it down to her because she was only saved for a year. We are going to experience. I couldn't even find Genesis in the Bible yet. Right, but she's, fi she finds it now. <laughs> we are going to experience intense, intense hatred. We are going to, in we're going to experience demonic forces. It's the nature of who we are. Yes. Are you willing to go through that? Do you want to go through that? I am not, listen, you're not going to, we're not going to get married in a year after tell me I didn't want to marry a preacher. You, you hoodwinked me. I rolled up my sleeves. She looked at me and she said, man, if there's one thing I love, I like a good fight. <laughs> You got to get a St. Bernard girl. I'm telling you, them down the roaders. I said, fine, fine. We'll make it. We'll fight. We won't lose. Only if we give, if we give up, we'll lose. Well, we're going to fight. And look, we've stood back to back mm -hmm. over the years. When people doubted us, when people did, we thought, understood us. It took them a little while to come around. We're not here to bash anybody. But you have to know who you are. That's right. And then others will find out who you are. That's right. If you don't know who you are, people will make you who they want you to be. And we're not in the world to be conformed to other people's opinions. That's right. There are certain people in the world that their opinion means everything to me, but there are many people, many, 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 many people's opinion don't mean anything to me at all. That's right. The people that I know that love me yep. and have proven it, I'll listen. But the others, they're naysayers, they're haters. They want to see you fail. They want to see you down like you are. Well, you're not going down because you're making the decisions that's going to be wise and bring you into the goodness and the blessings of the Lord. Amen. So Adam knew his work. Adam knew who he was called to be. And when you know that, you'll be able to advance. Number four, stay in the word. God spoke to Adam. Genesis 2, 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, you can eat of every tree, but not of that tree. Mm -hmm. His life was lived by remaining faithful to the Word of God. Yes. It's no different than for you and me. That's right. We are to remain, make this, make this the primary source yes. of all your decision making. Yes. Do not veer. There is no book that's been more tried and tested and proven that if you build your life on the Word of God, Amen. heaven and earth may pass away, but God's Word Amen. will stand forever. Yes. And number five, seek the kingdom of God first. Matthew 6, 33, I'm talking to the singles. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. Life does not begin with marriage. Marriage is built on the sand when the single person is not solid for the kingdom of God before you meet the right person. So if you're not whole, unique as an individual, and you may meet Mr. or Mrs. Wright, you will not be right because you haven't built your singleness on solid rock, but sink in sand. And we all know what happens there when the rain comes. When the rain comes, you're washed away. But when you build, so how do I, what do I do? You start building your life now as a single man, That's a good. single woman on the five priorities that we just talked about, building it on the kingdom of God. And I'd like to add, and also be healed. 
You cannot come into a marriage with so much brokenness. I had so much brokenness into, in my life. I had, God had to do a quick work in me because I got saved and then we were married about a year later. So he did a quick work in me, but I couldn't come into a marriage expecting my mate to be the healer to fix everything in me. So I had to work hard on the Lord doing a great work inside of me. And, and I want to encourage the singles get healed. If there are trauma in your childhood, if there's daddy problems, if there's anything, past relationship problems, anything, be healed, get healed, seek healing. Make it an intentional thing that I'm going to be healed because I want to be whole so I can bring into the marriage and I can contribute, not deduct from the marriage. So let us, let us, let us just close on, on this word. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, and that's where we're going. So when we talk about singles, there's a broad spectrum. Yeah. We realize there are those who have not ever been married. And then there are those here in this audience, watching online, that have been married, but have gone through a very hurtful separation and divorce. We realize singleness is a wide paintbrush. Yeah. Divorce is like death. But I believe the key to the openness and healing that Tammy's talking about after divorce or separation is forgiveness. Forgiveness. And I have, you know, I, I've talked about forgiveness for years, and we always want to be profound. But forgiveness, I've learned, does not release the hurt. Hmm. But it opens the door yeah. for the one who does heal the broken heart. I always thought that true forgiveness was when you walked up to someone and said, well, you hurt me, but don't worry about it. I'm saved. I'd like to hit you with a baseball bat, <laughs> but Jesus just won't let me. <laughs> We've all been there, and we think that that's scriptural forgiveness. Forgiveness is when we will to acknowledge the scripture, and it's also in the Lord's Prayer. The only prayer that Jesus ever taught us to pray, within it, as one of the thesis, one of the, the themes, forgive me as I forgive others. Yes. It is not an emotion. I don't feel it. You don't have to feel anything. Right. Living by faith is not feelings. Right. We don't live by, if you live by feelings, it'll be up one day, down the other. We live by faith, the just, the people of God, not the world. Don't compare yourself to the world. The just shall live by faith. Amen. We will. Yes. We will to live in forgiveness because the Lord knows that if we remain in unforgiveness, that that hurt yes. will turn into anger. And then from anger, that anger and hurt will turn to hate. Yep. And hate means that you have judged someone and that you are still blaming them for where you are. Mm. Matthew 6, 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Yes. The word forgive in the Hebrew, we know the Bible is written in Hebrew and in Greek. The Old Testament language, Hebrew, means to cut loose. In other words, what we do in an act of our will is that we release the person 
from everything that has been perpetrated upon us as a person. Yes. Forgiveness is not an emotion. Forgiveness is a decision. That's good. It's an act of your will. Today, singles, divorced, separated, choose to obey God's Word. It's easy to come in church and praise God and love God and go through the yeah. ceremony. Where we become different than the world is when we actually take this Word and we decide, I'm going to be a doer of the Word. Yes, yes, yes. And not just someone who hears the Word. Yes. We, as believers, whether we're single, divorced, married, children, adults, grandparents, we must live the life of forgiveness. Yes. We must be reservoirs of forgiveness. Yes. Everyone here has a story. Oh, yes. Some stories will make you cry more, mm. but everyone's story is real to them. And my word of encouragement to the singles and to all of us today, the advice for the widows and for the divorced and the separated is to focus on the Lord, let him work forgiveness in you. And I just have a real quick admonition that I want to give you real quickly, and we're going to line because I want to minister and I want to cut some of the tentacles and the umbilical cords from your past. Amen. I believe that's what the Holy Spirit wants to end up today, that whether you're divorced, separated, or whatever may have happened, that you're still holding on to the past, mm. which is negating your future. And if you could just have eyes of the Spirit today, your future and the, and the things that God has planned for you are much greater yes. than anything yes. that has come against you. Yes. So I just have some advice for the widows. I was asked, surely, Bishop, you don't have no time for us widows. I've got all the time in the world because true religion, and some people don't even like that word religion. I love that word religion. We so misuse the word religion. We say, we don't want religion. We want spirituality. We, 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 want, we want a relationship. Huh. We'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. I'll get you straight on your theology. But listen, what you can do as a divorce, separated, single, widow, is let God use your mind, wisdom. When you are feeling hurt and alone, do not turn to your mind of wisdom because yes. you will fail. Yes. Make your plans and God will work it out. Don't jump into a new relationship quickly. Don't let this take your mind from you. Yes. When you're going through troubles, your mind is where the battlefield is. That's right. But I want to encourage you today, God's given you not a spirit of fear, but a mind that is full of faith and full of power. Yes. Secondly, practical advice for the widows, the divorced, the separated, take care of your body. Come on. Don't lose interest in your physical appearance. That's Girl, good. go get you a new dress. Get it, get it eat properly. You need energy because when you meet the next person, if that's what God has for you, you're going to have to put a little pep in your step <laughs> to get going. Come on, girl. Now, maybe God hasn't called you to meet somebody else. That's fine. But take care of your physical person. Don't just dwindle away because, again, you're not complete because of someone else. You are single and complete because now you're married to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's Come right. on. Here's what I've learned. When your body is fit, you can handle stress. When your body's fit, That's right. you won't die of a broken heart. Do you know that people, it's proven, psychological, that psychologists tell us that people enter into a high level of stress. It leads them into such a place where it breaks their body down. That's it. Yes. This is why you can't afford to walk around with a grudge to somebody. That's right. 
because it breaks you down. That joker's running around and don't even care. That's right. That's right. But when you get, you get yourself right with God, you get yourself whole and unique and, and you're walking with him in such a, a close union, God will take whatever the enemy meant for your bad and turn it around, ladies and gentlemen, for your good. Yes. And real, real quickly, thirdly, people, you need people around you. You do. People are the church. Yep. It's an organized community. Somebody says, I don't like organized religion, so let me ask you this. Do you like unorganized religion? That is such a dumb, dumb thought. I don't like organized religion, so we would, pre we would maybe prefer unorganized. Right. It's like saying, I don't like organized football games. So you would rather today that the Saints play the Texans in an unorganized fashion. No. No fool wants to watch a game that doesn't have any rules. Right. It's like playing Monopoly with people who make up the rules. Oh, I hate that. I hate that. I can't. You ever play with somebody who makes up the rules as they go along? Yes. Cheaters. And that's what people do in their religious walk. They do that in their religious walk. They make up their own Jesus. Yes, yes. They serve their Jesus. I don't want your Jesus. That's right. I want the Jesus in the Bible. I want the Jesus that is historically the Messiah, Yeshua. You need the church. Hebrews 10, 25 says, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together Come on. as the manner of some. When you're a widow, you're divorced, single, whatever you've gone through, you have a tendency to want to be alone, but it's not good that man or one man be alone. That's right. Now, hear me. You don't want to just be with just anybody. No. You want to be with the right people. He says, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now you say, well, I go to church. Well, you know, a church is an assembly. It's not just a gathering. Right. An assembly. I have assembled many bikes, and I, I hate it. <laughs> I'm hoping that as we go along here, Santa Claus will actually bring a bike to my house that's assembled. But he doesn't. He always brings them in a box, and I got to put it together. Surely one of those elves could have done that. <laughs> but what I've learned about an assembly is that you got to put the screw in the right hole. You got to put the right part. Fathers, read the instructions. You put the right part in the right place. That's what happens when we come together. The right parts are in the right place. That's an assembly, not a gathering. So you don't need to go to church to worship Jesus. I get that. But you need to go to church to obey God. Yes. And have people to stand with you. Yes. Strength in numbers. Yes. Nobody ever attacks anybody when they're by themselves. Walk with your posse. Yes. Live with your entourage. Yes. When you're hurting, check out your social media meter but be selective who you share your plans with. So let me just focus on this as we close. Right here, we're gonna close. Forgiveness means to cut loose. As we're praying about how do we end today, this is what came to my mind, that there are those of us in this room and you can receive this, and I don't mean to embarrass anybody, so please do not take this as I'm trying to point out anybody. All of us are in need of prayer. But there are some of us that God has such a great plan in the future. And we may not even understand it or know it, but that we've been so connected to a, a, a past yes. umbilical cord that it's, it's hindering us, not just from finding the right person, because that's not what our focus was today, but from you being the right person. 
And if that is in God's plan, then you will be ready when Mr. or Mrs. Wright is presented to you. I knew God was going to give me. Listen, I know you got to understand that scripture, I believe, was written more for men than women. Mm. It's not good that man shall be alone. It is a lot easier for women to live alone than men. That's true. I've seen it over and over and over. When my mom passed away, my dad said, son, I ain't called to be alone. I'm going to remarry. I didn't have a problem with that. I've seen women, widows, and they, they don't remarry. But for men, it's probably a little bit more difficult. I, that's just the nature. God has somebody for you if that's in the plan. But hear what I'm saying. Be ready when that moment is presented yes. to you. It's difficult to be ready, whether there's someone for you or God has you to live by yourself. Right. It's difficult to live a life fulfilled in the plan of God if you're holding on and connected to the past. That's true. And that's what we want to minister to today. Next week, if you're looking for a husband and you want to date, come next week. We're going to talk to you about the Ten Commandments of Dating. Meanwhile, you can't even date right unless you get rid of the past. That's right. That's right. So let's deal with first things first. I would say most people have not been given the gift of celibacy. That is a very rare gift. I knew I didn't have it. I didn't want it. A kid came to me one time and said, Bishop, I think God's called me to be celibate. I said, no, he hasn't. He said, how do I know? I said, because you already have a kid. <laughs> you don't, have to, be, away. Look, you don't away. have to be smart to do my job. <laughs> you just have to observe people. No, he was serious. He was all spiritual. Oh, I got to skip this experience. God's called me to a deeper life. Said, no, he hasn't. He goes, how do you know? You have a son. <laughs> Raising. You've already opened the door, bro. Now you, just have to, now you have to control it. Now you have to learn how to control it. What about it today? There's a song that came to me yesterday. We, we used to sing it back in the day. We were singing, we were singing songs uh, of the, our journey. Tammy still loves songs from the 90s. What can we sing? That's when she got saved. And so for her, she loves all, you know, and I love those songs, but my, mine goes way back. Mine goes to the 60s and the 70s. <laughs> and I grew up in the Pentecostal Father. It goes back to the 30s and the 20s. And I grew up on, uh, on can't take nothing from my journey now. I got to make it to heaven somehow. Sing it, boy. I'm not going to sing. But then there was a song that we used to sing when we first came here, got here to this church, this building. And it was like, it's not over, it's not finished, it's just the beginning. And God is in it. All things are new. I believe today, for all of you beautiful single individuals, whether you are never married, separated, widowed, divorced, it's not over. It's just the beginning. Yes, Lord. And I believe God wants to solidify that. And he wants to minister to you for the next few moments so that your future, whether it's with someone, whether it's with another man or, or, or another spouse, or if it's to be single, that it would be so fulfilling in him that it would be the greatest years of your life. Yes. That the latter house yes, Lord. shall be greater. I believe that. You gotta believe that. Yes. That's the word of God. Yes. So y'all wanna sing that song? You wanna yo, I know we I threw it on y'all yesterday. So uh, but I'll let y'all stand. Come on, stand with me. Be 